so much. I, it's such a delight to be here. And I've been in my life to very many uh, conferences, but never with this setting. It's so nice, so um, all I have to do is to thank uh, Ken and Jim and his whole family for doing something very different, very personal, very human. But uh, my talk today is going to be it's going to be a very hot topic. Uh, it's based on a paper that um, I wrote with two uh, persons, a student of mine and also a colleague of mine from the university. Uh, last year we just uh, launched it in the Presbyterian uh, University where I work in Brazil, a center of uh, economic freedom. And we are trying as hard as we can to welcome everybody who, are, who is committed as we are to economic freedom. Okay? And so my talk has to do with the more the consequence, but a lot of it, a lot about the logic of the 2013 presidential and campaign finance. And my interpretation here um, will be a little bit nuanced because it will be based on uh, Austrian economics and public choice economics. Okay, it's very likely that some of you uh, know um, a pretty famous paper by Peter Butchka and Edward Lopez about the need to integrate public choice theory with Austrian economics, okay? And in a way, I'm going to test the uh, idea of integrating those perspectives based on what happened in Brazil. And not more uh, only what happened in Brazil, but the consequences. Some of you probably have heard about the car wash operation. Okay, and the scandals, every day is a new scandal. Many people are uh, already in jail. Uh, others are wearing, are at home, but wearing an uh, uh, ankle bracelet. Okay, and uh, it promises to be as dramatic as it was Money Politi, which was the clean hand operation in the beginning of the 90s in Italy. Okay, so let me talk about that and all the movements related to that. Okay. There is no free movement. All right. So uh, the main motivation here, okay, really, uh, I've been blessed to be here talking to many people addressing uh, the goings on in Latin America and uh, I loved the, many of your talks. And we have a big motivation here. It's not only Brazil, but uh, what made me shift a great deal of my research into eaters was something like in Brazil we really need so badly new economic okay, uh, theoretical empirical perspectives to really explain the logic of the presidential campaign okay, and why we need these new perspectives we need something fresh new because many people are condemning corruption scandals and they are in for public finance of campaign. Something that, to my mind, is a kind of uh, slippery slope, okay? To say in a very diplomatic, very generous way. We need really to dig deeper into this chronism and the specificities of the chronism in Brazil, okay? Which um, put, her, put us in a very difficult situation. Okay. It's time to change individuals, not only sects or groups, okay, are learning, but they are learning the hard way the consequences for themselves okay, of um, economic planning. Okay. I'll tell you very quickly about what Dilma Rousseff wanted to do in economic terms. Okay, and in terms of uh, having extra money, spending a lot to favor what we call named companies, which were the uh, campeões nacionais, national champions, that really created lots of room for cartels of construction companies. And they invaded the Petrobras, the uh, crazy run, run state uh, oil company. And what that implied, 
Okay? In microeconomic terms, I'm more a macro person than macro, but it really destroyed our economy. So it's time to change. So why do we care? We do care, I do care. People who are working with me, and I hope you, I have your attention to care a bit, because all political parties, everyone is involved in the oil scandal. The car wash uh, operation started um, three years ago with this idea of trying to track down and to put in jail uh, doneros that are black money okay, um, dealers okay, who help criminal activities okay, to send money away. And uh, because of the plea bargaining, by the way, they found out that it was not only related to drug dealing, many politicians were involved, and many top executives of the oil company Petrobras, and many of these guys appointed to be top executives in Petrobras, they were appointed by political parties. So it's a very different time of crony relations. And I think if you want a better new world, I think President State, people from Latin America, everywhere of course, otherwise it would be too foolish on my part, but we need to dig deeper into the connections between campaign finance, cronism, okay, big labor, big money, okay, and big government. Because this is not a disease, it's a symptom of a disease. So the way out, to my humble opinion, is more economic freedom. Okay? And there are lots of cases related to Petrobras scandal, like uh, maybe some of you guys eat in your home, okay? pilgrim uh, stuff, uh, swift armor, okay, meat. There is this big company who was one of the biggest uh, national champions for uh, Lula and Dilma presidency. The name of the company is JBS, right? So it's the biggest meat company in the planet. Who has been giving a lot of money to the current president? Okay. And due to recorded conversations between the owner of JBS okay, and Michelle Pepper, the president, the current there was a trial for him of a new or a new impeachment in Brazil. But he was very politically okay, um, able to get rich and probably to buy many Congress people. So I think it's, we should care about this. It really matters. As I was saying to you before, sorry, I'm, I suck at using the mic. And I'm a teacher, I can I learn. I was about to speak loud, so I think it's more pleasant for me and for you that I speak without the mic. Okay. Anyway, it's better to record than with the mic. Is it? Can you say? Okay, so I will do that only because you asked. So, okay? But it's not really my cup of uh, a tip. It doesn't matter. So, um, we should be sensitized to this talk, really, because what happened in Brazil is uh, absurd. Okay? They come up with a big cartel of construction companies. Okay? They have been buying privileges for very, very lucrative, very profitable contracts with Petrobras. And they're paying everybody, everybody, not only the top executives. Okay? They're giving Rolex watches, they're giving a Ferrari, Maserati cars to everybody. And that cannot be sustainable. Okay. And um, due to lots of demands that Brazil really has, okay, infrastructure, bottlenecks, and also demands related to the Olympic Games and the World Cup, okay, there were lots of demands for infrastructure projects. Okay. And uh, lots of contracts have to be implemented, lots of uh, investments have to take place in ports, in nuclear plants, in subway lines, in railroads, football arenas. Do you 
put them in Brazil with Brazilian money, but some of them under Lula da Silva and Rousseff uh, administration, they sent this money to finance, as Maria uh, rightly uh, remarked, things in Cuba and Venezuela. Okay. So I'm very happy that we have impeachment. But it would be even better if we had a second impeachment. But we couldn't do that, that are for and against that. But the crony relations have been destroying the economy. And the issue is that Brazil, because of its institutional history and risk, has to deal with very high interest rate. Okay? The long-term interest rate for you guys to have an idea okay, is about 14% uh, percent per year. Okay? I know some of you might be shocked, but that's the way it is. If you have a small business and you go to the National Bank of Development, it's a public bank. You pay that, but the national champions, okay, JBS, when Goldman Sachs uh, called uh, people from the Brazilian people from JBS and JBS America to do the deal with Pilgrim, okay, they didn't have enough money. So the National Bank of Development okay, and then gave the loan to the Bastista brothers to buy with a subsidized credit of 5%. But um, the, the side effect of that, the unintended oh, consequence of that, the government didn't have the money. So they had to go on to the bond market and to okay, uh, the, the sell bonds that would pay 14%. And many entrepreneurs know that if, if we are over the, Entrepreneurs, we look for opportunities, right, in the market. Some people were making very good money to the detriment of very many other people. So we should be sensitized because this growing uh, the, uh, expenditure and big government okay, that was becoming bigger and bigger and bigger could be never fit together with economic freedom, but with a project of power that could ruin Brazil and help even to make things in Latin America even more difficult because you all know how Brazil is important in Latin America. So it's really something serious to talk about. So that's my aim. Let's talk, talk a bit. I want to talk to you about this presidential campaign and why it does make a big case for assessing the empirical validity of um, an approach that integrates public choice economics or public choice theory, if you prefer, with um, Austrian insights and okay, economics. And this gives a very good possibility for us to um, understand why we deserve okay, to go on a different developmentalism, structuralist ideas that are so strong in Latin America are making us falling behind. Okay. Brazil used to be regarded as a country of the future, okay, as this living giant. When Brazil was booming, it and Jack Daniels had that uh, propaganda okay, of the giant was, a, was awakened and he would do whatever. But due to the big government, the giant got drunk. And a hangover theory okay, of the Austrians shows how explanatory it can be, right? So uh, it is part of all, I know it's, uh, I told Ken yesterday that I was in trouble to um, adjust my presentation because I could talk and I teach this kind of stuff, public joy and institutional economics and Austrian School of Economics, and I'm not sure how I could tackle these issues with you, especially because I didn't want to bother you, really. And uh, it's a very uh, eclectic group, which is fascinating. But in a sense, I was saying, okay, I could always show the results, 
of our assessment of the campaign finance and show examples of chronisms and all the benefits that, for example, a big construction company, uh, which was the second top donor for the presidential campaign, had benefits and lots of projects that are under suspicion. And so you would say, okay, what she saying makes sense. And it has everything to do with different talks we're having here these days. And I said, okay, some people never studied economics, and maybe they heard of public choice theory. And so it's time to, to, to say. And yet, maybe starting with a fantastic quote from a guy called Gordon Tulloch. Okay? He wrote, he co-authored a book uh, called Government Failure. And when I look at my country and my casual observation of your own countries, the actual moment on, I see that the government okay, is not at all about all people, by people and for the people. And it makes complete sense to say that the government is of the busy, the bossy, and the buddy. And we idealize too much. And in Latin America, we say that people that go for a civil uh, uh, servant, service, they are um, altruistic people. <laughs> if we have, and we are learning the wrong way, that that's not so at all. So, uh, um, these ideas of introducing economic insights into the study of political process, they say that we are just humans, flawed, no doubt. We do the best we can, given the constraints. But we are driven by our self-interest. Of course, that doesn't imply that we care about others. Okay? I'm sure that we all care about many things, but in personal relations, we can say that what runs this economy, and it's better, it's not the color of the skin, but it's our willingness to be better off in trade. And that's a very good lesson. And contracts, uh, designing contracts is a big deal. It's very difficult. All contracts have incomplete clauses, but the issue that um, having political contracts, it's even more difficult, right? Because there is rationality, but there is also passion in politics. The asymmetric information is even more gigantic in the political arena. That can give rise, of course, for a political entrepreneurship, no doubt. But I hesitate that lots of government failures have a great deal to do with the fact that there is a standard Benefits are concentrated, and in certain institutional uh, matrices, like the Brazilian institution of SATE, they have names, and they are always the same names, and the benefits are concentrated, whereas the costs are dispersed to low-income households most of the time. So I think we need to take these ideas into consideration. Nevertheless, there are very many people suggesting that the public choice ideas are not enough to understand the actual going on and all the complexities in the uh, political arena. So um, some people, like myself, uh, became interested in um, incorporating in public economics ideas of the options. And why is that? Because I think we cannot use this metaphor of the market so well, to dig deeper into the inner workings of the, uh, the political arena. Because we come, when we study the market, we have this idea of equilibrium, static equilibrium, and very simplistic assumptions, unrealistic assumptions. And we don't have the time, to, we, we don't have the ro uh, role for the time. Um, we cannot really deal with this issue of the contracts, the complexity that have a great deal to do with the fact that human knowledge is local, is dispersed. And when we study, we think that uh, theoretical knowledge is the same as practical knowledge. And that's stupid of us. And sometimes it's better to live in a free place because we will learn, we will learn faster. When we live in a place with paternalistic history, you will learn, but most painful way. Okay, I dare to say. And it's, it's pretty complicated because this knowledge problem, I think, should be incorporated in the public economic studies. 
And connected to that, the fact that there are not entrepreneurs only in the market, there are entrepreneurs in the political arena. They look for opportunities, okay? They can profit by selling wealth transfers. Of course, this has to do a great deal with the specificities of certain institutional uh, environments, no doubt. But, uh, but there are buyers too, right? Uh, unions are buyers. And in Brazil, unions are really, really eager buyers. And a big companies as well. Okay. So that's how I go to the chronism. Because what is cronies, uh, crony relations all about? People try to make money due to the political connections, right? Close political. It's a symbiotic relationship. But the biggest challenge posed to many Latin American countries, including Brazil, is that even though we, it might be very uh, seducing to um, generalize and institutionalize rent seeking. But rent seeking is about privileges, right? We cannot give privileges to everybody. The deals always come. And they come and they're so expensive. And um, but if you have a long-standing tradition, a history, okay, uh, that has the idea that the state is the godfather, if you prefer, or big brother to be more modern. And the role of the state is to make investment and to make people happy. It's very difficult to end up this type of symbiotic okay, and the connections to go on doing activities based on personal relationships okay, and buying privileges. So uh, that's very difficult. So, uh, the, of course, it depends on the, the, the type of institutional setting, but cronism is the best policy for many countries, and crony relations are very good for Brazil. And um, I want to tell you that um, Lula da Silva administration and Rousseff, okay, they wanted to change and maybe to win the Nobel Prize of Economics by proposing a new okay, of the economic metrics. They would say that by going on with social policy, Bolsa Familia is a, an uh, education-based conditional cash transfer. Okay. Brasil Carinoso um, was a program um, uh, to help uh, to lower uh, extreme poverty by giving okay, this transfer, income transfer to uh, children um, from six months to, to two years. And uh, having a medical, uh, generalized medical service for everyone. Okay. I, don't, I, I, I really want later to talk to Maria to know the, the, the terms of the negotiations of the program Mais Medicos with Cuban. Okay. So uh, lots of uh, Cuban doctors went to Brazil. And uh, it's not because there are no doctors, because Brazilian doctors don't want to to work in certain hard conditions. Okay? They are not humane conditions. And unfortunately, there are people who would accept okay? but everything would be better than being in a completely non-freedom place. So uh, the idea was to go on with the Keynesian okay, idea that you can rise household income. They do buy a lot refrigerators and cars and a lot of stuff and this will create incentive for investment okay? and with, with investments you go with the productivity increase required and be more competitive to the world but to do that you depend the state to give all the rules of the game to go on engaging in industrial policies that would choose strategic sectors that would make Brazil to take off in a sustainable way. This is impossible. This is impossible because there is no money for that. 
So that's why I say to you that now it's our hungover time. And that's really a shame. And uh, this uh, kind of economic metrics that she, they wanted to win the Nobel Prize of Economics, individuals notice over time. And in 2013, because of all the things and uh, the scandals of corruption related to the, um, uh, to the games, to the Cup, World Cup, and next the World Olympic Games, the popularity of the Rusev was very low. Inflation was very high. Okay. And in worse times, okay, uh, fooling people okay, and hiding the real numbers, which is more the outrageous. Okay. But this really, uh, the, when uh, there is lack of money, people don't want the government anymore. Even though many people were supporting uh, Rousseff and uh, Lula da Silva because they had accomplished something wonderful to make uh, starving people poor. But I think more is possible. And with the money that was made because of the uh, external scenario, the context, Brazil and of the high prices of commodities, they could do much more than giving okay, a chance for starving people to be poor. Okay, and all this talk, some of you on Brazil was really bombing, saying that there was a big middle class. That's not anything okay, that they could do is to make starving people poor. But why do you not have anything else? You don't want to get rid of Dilma, Rousseff, or it takes a while for you to accept because there is this alliance. But at the end of the day, what really matters was this cronism based on three powerful groups, big business, construction companies, and in a minute I will show you that they were the big donators, okay? The, the entrepreneurs that matter, and they will charge for the privileges that they bought. Big labor, okay? And big government. So, this cronism, this cronism has to do with my privileges. Why? Because it's very costly to run business, to do business in Brazil. Okay. According to all these indexes of doing business in Brazil, Brazil, given its size, and uh, it could be better positioned. But it's so bureaucratic. Okay. So let's try to minimize transaction costs. And we pay bribes for that. And let's try to get benefits. We can buy okay, a good relationship. And one way to do is not the only way, but it's one systematic way in Brazil. And I dare to say in many Latin American countries is to finance campaigns. So, and this is a predictable result, an intended consequence of the fact that we have a very poor business environment. It's very difficult. Okay. And of course, we have to consider, and um, I don't know if you guys have ever read uh, the book, uh, Corruption and Government uh, by Rose Ackerman. I think she's, it's a pretty good stuff. And uh, she says that, of course, to think about bribery and corruption, government corruption, that's my focus here, okay, has to do with how profitable, the net benefits, okay? how risky. But if you are a friend, if the Batista, okay, the brothers were close friends from Lula, they would have money to buy any meat company, whatever they can <coughs> want. And that's what, we do. that's what happened, really. So, and there is no tomorrow, okay, because the, uh, the discount factor in institutions like Institutional settings like Brazil, there is no future. So let's make okay, as much money as we can because we are by the side of our friends. Okay. So let's try to test somehow. It's a very modest test, okay, because this is the very beginning of uh, the research project that I have with my group of uh, the, the Center of Economic Freedom in Sao Paulo. And we, we are going to go more systematically uh, 
by going with case studies and all that, and there are lots of, because of the car wash operation, we can have lots of data, which is fundamental to find out and to subject to test these bold conjectures that I'm proposing here. It's time to connect and to do empirical studies uh, with public choice economics with Austrian science. Okay, so let me let me try to do that. Okay, so based on some empirical pieces of evidence that I've been collecting, and some of them I will show to you, okay, how the, 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 the behavior of the, the, the campaign finance sheds extra light on the high profitability of cronism and corruption in Brazil. Okay? There is a lot to come because uh, the, the, the prosecutors who live in Curitiba, they are still okay, working on a gigantic list of senators, deputies, and executives of public and private companies. Okay? And as soon as this okay, is uh, available, draw better, more solid inferences. Okay. But really, what happened over there was that uh, under Lula, and Silva, and Rousseff, because they are from the same party, the Workers' Party, what they did, they used the biggest Brazilian company, which is a crazy state oil company. They used Petrobras as a kind of personal Make it bank to finance and to go on bribing, 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 bribing every one. Okay. But the money doesn't last forever. You cannot pay bribes to everybody. Okay. Privilege is an expression of uh, an institutions of predatory relations. Okay. It's impossible, and that's what happens. So now, let me show a little bit um, the results, the initial results we have. Okay, all this uh, data um, uh, can be accessed in the sites. Okay. So about car wash operation, about the data of, of the 20, uh, 2014 presidential election, the Supreme Court. And um, so uh, if some of you can be interested in that, um, I can let me so, let me show you. So, uh, Brazil, uh, electoral process uh, involved a kind of a mixed type of uh, campaign finance. There is public money and also private money, right? Um, and uh, at the presidential uh, period run in 2015, there were 11 candidates. Right, and okay, there were uh, individual contributions, private contributions, most of them businessmen, as yes. everyone can suspect, and also uh, uh, corporate <coughs> donations. And we can see that individual contributions are very little, and the corporate donors are quite significant. But I don't, I, I would never preach. There is no paper I can say about that. Okay. So, you guys can see that the total contributions, okay, majority, 54% was to Dilma Rousseff, okay, who made it. This is the first. Let me let me go um, more uh, the period. There were two rounds in the election. Okay, in the first round we had the share of received votes okay, to uh, the, the lady in, uh, in office, Dilma Rousseff, so she had uh, 41.59. Second, Alessio Neves, 33. Okay. And Marina Silva from the uh, party, she's a big environmentalist, okay, activist, environmental activist, and others. Okay. So, the most competitive, okay, the most promising president of Brazil for more Dilma Rousseff. But that is pretty predictable. It's no big deal. I want to show the connections and what Lava Jato is showing about the connections between the top donators 
the business sectors they come from, and to whom they fit. I think this is much more fun. Hey, for Juma uh, Rousseff, um, Aesu Nevis, and Marina Silva, who were the, the, the most promising uh, the winners of the presidential uh, uh, election in uh, 2013. The same sectors gave made it to the three of them, okay, which is also predictable. What is very interesting is to notice okay, who were the top contributors and from which uh, sector of the economy they were coming from. Okay. So, first, construction, infrastructure, engineering. Okay. Second, meat products. Okay. The first donor for Rousseff okay, was uh, JBS. And it's fantastic the difference of the contribution. Okay. Comparing to other people, he um, uh, donated four times more. Okay. Second, so the second was a meat product, and the third we have financial. Okay. But the financial system in Brazil, it's, it's very amazing. And I was having a chat the, about that with my colleague. Because I said, okay, beverages and um, basic inputs, it's not that much uh, lower than the financial. Because uh, the financial system was protected already. So it, it has an institutional uh, the, the, the phase and maturity that they don't need to give so much money, right? We have to really do a go on a digging deeper into the sectors to find out, because in the past, they were donating much, much more, okay? It's the first time that the second donator, really, the past, the first, used it to be the banking, the okay, banking system and financial and insurance, because it's a very regulated activity there, and the construction. So this is very interesting. And the beverage, okay, beverage, um, the food, to be more precise. Um, there is um, a Bev, it's a very big okay, company of beverage. Some beers, famous beers like Budweiser, the Dutch, Ertoyan, Young, Kohard, uh, and all these things, beers, famous beers, uh, Corona, and they belong to this company of uh, the biggest uh, shot entrepreneur in Brazil. It's Jorge Paulo Lima, so he has a German name, but he's the owner. And there is also a brewery called Petropolis, but they were doing business with Odebrecht. Odebrecht is the biggest uh, construction company, whose president, whose CEO is in jail, and he'll be in jail for 19 years. Okay. So, and so it's. Um, it, I think it's it's very interesting that you guys uh, can find out interesting results. Okay. This is still uh, uh, sketchy, um, uh, embryonary work, but there'll be more to come. And I know that there are many people in Brazil, and they're asking that journals abroad to for us to go on taking deeper into the data and to find out interesting results that I want to share with you. So tell me, how my time? Um, zero. Well, zero. <laughs> done. <laughs> done. <laughs> so um, I will um, end up, and I really uh, apologize. Sorry. But uh, there is something. Let me just, can you? Can yeah, I yeah, have yeah, yeah, five yeah. minutes, <laughs> at least five minutes? Okay. Because there are lots of things that can be done, and I don't, I don't want to disturb all the arrangements. But really, it's very important for us to understand that there is evidence of progress. For you guys to have an idea, 10 out of the 20 biggest donors received 3.2 billion reais, okay, divided by three, of federal government from the service. They have contracts with the service. Okay. It's profitable because government is a contractor. Okay. And they received people from the construction, okay, the big construction companies, because they were required to build up the, uh, the, all the highways in Rio for the uh, Olympic Games. They were hired to do the uh, nuclear uh, the energy uh, plant, a 
of Andrea Grace, which is really a government failure, and a bunch of things. So these pieces of evidence suggest something. 17, for you guys to have an idea, of the top 20 campaign donors received 10.5 billion in subsidized credit. As I said, okay, there were cooperation with big business. It was a symbiotic for them. For us, it's not symbiotic. Okay? It's a par a par they are parasites, <coughs> but they are symbiotic to each other. Okay? And they received subsidized, and the government had to, uh, <coughs> to, to sell bonds, to print bonds in the market, because they had to subsidize these people. So inefficiency pays off in this institutional metrics because you do everything for the French. And if you think about this, uh, the numbers, okay, the main donors received the value in terms of uh, the, the, the tax privileges and lots of benefits, 28 times more than they contributed to the election. Okay. So it's such a, excuse me, fucking profit business. Okay? <laughs> and with car wash operation, which, Okay, is a very hot, okay, to be on Netflix very soon. Okay. You see that young people, okay, young prosecutors from the federal police who are uh, disenchanted, and that's good, because with disenchantment we can feel that we can we deserve a better trend. So they are going more than arresting the black money dealers. And they found out that the senators and all these guys are and let me show you a few names, okay? In three years only, there were almost 200 people convicted and 27 arrested. And some people are already wearing okay, the uh, ankle bracelet to monitor. They cannot leave the house. And big names like the ex-governor of Rio, okay? the ex-president of the Congress, the House of the Deputy. Okay, because, uh, because we have two, the Congress it has two houses, House of Deputies and the Senate. So, Senator, CEO of the Odebrecht, okay, and the people from the construction companies, many, many lobbyists, many, um, so this is a, 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 something that I found out it was published by the uh, Prosecution Service of the Union, a kind of uh, connection of Petrobras. They all nominate, nominate political parties, it's all go for funds for elections. And that's really, really bad. The second donor, okay, and the, the, to, the, to Marina, and the A.S. Fonegis, and Dilma Rousseff. Dilma Rousseff made it, okay, but she didn't last long. Because the country wouldn't be like that. So, the second, take a look, this is too small, you cannot read it. Some contracts who are very uh, suspicious and are under the, uh, the glasses of the, the prosecutors. Nuclear energy, uh, the highways in Rio, uh, the Amazon arena, okay? hydroelectric in uh, the Belmonte, many stuff, the port of Rio, railroads, so many things. Okay? So it's very profitable to go on cronies because the total project okay, that the government estimated they would pay, that was that. But the final estimated to end up to finish those projects is that. So people made money. And I want to thank and to say that in Latin America, many of us think it could be a small permit, maybe a generous act at a negligible cost. If the tournament rights are many and society need to decide the survival one at a time, it may be many and many termites erode in the house. Thank you so much. <laughs>